The story starts with Tom, a 16-year-old who leads an ordinary life marked by the past loss of his parents. He resides with Nan, his grandmother. His daily routine includes going to school, where he regularly encounters Danny, his best friend and fellow student. At school, Tom encounters Lucy, his crush who suggests they hang out at her place after school for a study session. She wants Tom's help with math. Trying to make things less tense, Lucy joked, why was the equal sign so humble? Because he knew he wasn't less than or greater than anyone else. This shared laugh lightens the atmosphere. However, school life isn't without its challenges and Tom often finds himself bothered by Eugene, the school bully. Later that night, Tom went to see Lucy at her home. He knocked and he noticed the door was unlocked. Upon entering the house to check on Lucy, he saw four criminals had just raped Lucy. One of them filming the incident sees Tom, and another one points a gun at him. In a quick thinking, Tom runs the scene. He attempts to contact the police while running, and when his phone is connected to the police he gets shot directly in the head by the criminal. Ten days after the incident, Tom regains consciousness in the hospital with his grandmother, Nan, at his side. The doctor informs them that they successfully performed a life-saving operation on Tom's brain despite severe damage. However, the doctor also mentions a complication. They couldn't remove specific cell phone fragments embedded in Tom's brain without risking his life. Consequently, they decide to leave these fragments in place. Upon recovering sufficiently, the hospital discharges Tom, allowing him to go home. At home Tom starts to notice an extraordinary ability. He can clearly hear conversations from other people's electronic devices. His brain, fused with the cell phone fragments, allows him to perceive the transmission of digital data traffic. He now can access global data servers, effortlessly retrieving information without external devices. Tom, driven by his newfound power, visits Lucy after a long absence. He apologizes and seeks to make amends, feeling regret for not protecting her on the fateful night. Lucy, understanding her struggles, expresses hope for improvement. I'm sorry. It's okay. On his way home, Tom eavesdrops on electronic conversations and encounters unsettling information. This unfamiliar information overwhelms him, leading to a moment of intense confusion and resulting in him passing out. The following day, Tom returns to school. Upon his return, he reunites with his best friend Danny. Tom harbors suspicions that Eugene and his bullying cohorts were involved in Lucy's assault. I think Eugene was there. Still, Danny dismisses the claim, believing that while Eugene may be troublesome, he has limits. In the class, Tom actively uses his unique ability to hack into Eugene's phone and finds a video of Lucy's assault. This discovery fills him with rage, and he focuses intensely on the cell phone, causing it to explode and releasing his pent-up frustration and resolve. <laughs> Later at a friend's party that night, Tom encounters Eugene and his group. Believing them to be the assailants, he aggressively confronts them for information. However, Danny steps in once more, pulling Tom away from the confrontation. Tom confided in Danny, disclosing Eugene's involvement in Lucy's incident. Disappointingly, Danny denied Tom's claim. Later, while visiting Lucy, Tom joined her on the balcony. As they observed the view, they saw Eugene and his friends passing below. Lucy's expression confirmed their guilt in the incident. The next day, Tom begins his reign of terror. He shadows Eugene and his friends, hacking into their mobile phones and gaining access to all their activities. In the darkness of the same night, Tom starts his hacking spree, manipulating their surroundings, from turning off the lights in their house to even recording one of Eugene's friends, Cass, in a compromising situation. The following day in class, while the professors are giving a presentation, Tom uses the projector to show a video of Cass masturbating in his room, which makes all of the students chuckle. Cass, who was present in the class, gets humiliated about it. On the same day, Tom visits Lucy and tells her the latest news about their class. Intrigued, Lucy is thoroughly entertained by Tom's story. However, Tom, maintaining a sense of mystery, initially contacts Lucy on her phone anonymously. When she inquires about his identity, he playfully suggests she refer to him as I Boy, who just wants to look after her. Later, Tom takes Lucy out for an outing. Amidst their conversation, Lucy confides in him, expressing her gratitude that he is the only person who bothered to see her. Tom, in turn, assures Lucy that he won't evade her company in the future and implores her to trust him. As they walk back home, Eugene and his group confront them. Under the impression that Tom and Lucy have been causing trouble on their devices, Eugene is ready to resort to violence. Swiftly, Tom sends an unidentified message to the group, redirecting their aggression toward the wrong target. 
confused Eugen's men search for the mysterious messenger, providing Tom and Lucy with a window of opportunity to escape the confrontation unscathed. After searching in confusion for the mysterious message sender, Eugen and his crew decide to take matters into their own hands. Spotting a car by the roadside, they attempt to steal it. However, their plans take an unexpected turn when they lock automatically after successfully getting into the car and can't be opened from the inside. Little do they know, Tom has remotely hacked into the car system. With the car locked and tension rising, Tom seizes control of the situation. He broadcasts a threatening message over the car radio, questioning Eugene and his men about their attack on Lucy's family. To intensify the pressure, Tom fills the car with smoke, deliberately adding a touch of fear. As panic sets in, he goes a step further, simulating fire in the vehicle to amplify their anxiety. Faced with the frightening scenario, one of Eugene's crew members, Cass, succumbs to fear and spills the beans. He reveals that they were acting on orders from someone named Cuts. After extracting the crucial information from Eugene's crew, Tom decides to release them. In the subsequent scene, Tom, fueled by revenge, tracks down Cuts' location. Upon arrival, Tom creates a diversion. He exploits his hacking skills, taking control of the TV to play a video of Cuts' car being disgracefully urinated. They all go to check on it. Tom, seizing the opportunity, slips into the house undetected. Once inside, Tom wreaks havoc, dismantling all electronic equipment using his exceptional abilities. In the process, he stumbles upon several packets of drugs and decides to take them. Once Cuts and his crew come back, they are stunned to see the place wrecked, and all the drugs are gone. That same night, Tom's retaliation doesn't conclude there. He strategically places the medications in small packets, planting them where Eugen and his gang reside. Taking it a step further, Tom hacks into the police department, feeding them false information that local school boys are involved in drug dealing. The intricate plan unfolds rapidly, and soon enough, the police raid Eugen and his friends, resulting in their arrest. Meanwhile, as Tom continues his vendetta, he manages to hack into Cut's bank account, draining it completely. Financially crippled, Cuts faces the consequences of Tom's digital prowess. The following night, eavesdropping on Cuts' conversation with his superior, Elman, Tom learns that Elman is increasingly agitated with their disrupted operations. From his vantage point atop a building, Tom attempts to track Elman's location but encounters an unexpected obstacle, as if Elman is shielded from detection. Simultaneously, Cuts, under pressure from Elman, directs his remaining men to uncover the identity of Eyeboy by seizing all electronic devices in the vicinity. Little do they realize that Tom doesn't rely on conventional hacking tools. The next day, after completing his exam, Tom intercepts a signal revealing a drug deal between Cuts and Elman. We can't afford any more trouble. Leave it to me, boss. <laughs> Got ya. Determined to thwart the transaction, he plans to burn all the drugs that night. On the other hand, Nan, concerned about Tom's change of behavior, seeks help from Tom's best friend Danny, who agrees to keep an eye on Tom. Tom, undeterred, persists in tailing Cuts' car. However, his pursuit unexpectedly changes course when Cuts, attempting to evade capture, throws his mobile into a random trash can. Facing this setback, Tom refuses to surrender and cleverly hacks into a satellite, successfully pinpointing Cuts' location again. Upon locating the site of the impending drug deal, Tom hastily learns some martial arts moves from the internet. In a swift and coordinated effort, he takes down several individuals and sets fire to a significant quantity of drugs. Unfortunately, before he can make a clean escape, Cuts and his crew arrive, initiating a brutal assault. In a dangerous moment, Tom manages to fend them off by emitting a high-frequency sound, narrowly avoiding a fatal outcome. The following morning, Tom regains consciousness in a secluded area by the river. Unaware of the turmoil Tom has been facing, Lucy anxiously waits for him at school, where they had promised to take an exam together. By the time Tom arrives, the exam is concluded, leaving Lucy disappointed. Outside the school, they are met with shock upon discovering Cass's lifeless body hanging above. Danny checks in on Tom's well-being, and Tom inquires about Cass's killer during their conversation. Danny suggests that it might be the responsibility of Eye Boy, unknowingly implicating Tom himself. Troubled by the consequences of his actions, Tom decides to confront the root of his problems. He returns to the doctor who operated on his head, seeking to remove the remaining cell phone fragments still embedded in his brain. Desperate to rid himself of the cell phone fragments in his brain, Tom visits the doctor, only to receive devastating news. Removing the pieces would instantly lead to his demise, leaving him distraught and overwhelmed with regret. Returning home with a weight of guilt, Tom is met with an ominous surprise. Elman and his men have invaded his house, holding Tom's grandmother hostage at gunpoint. 
a peculiar interference prevents Tom from clearly seeing Elman. Unveiling a shocking revelation, Elman discloses that he has been aware of iBoy's true identity all along. He also knows Tom's unique ability to hack without electronic devices. To Tom's dismay, Elman obtained this information from Danny, who had been secretly observing Tom. Danny, motivated by financial gain, willingly supplied Elman with the details. With Tom cornered, Elman issues a command, hack into the bank system and transfer money to his account since he paid a lot of money when he bailed out Eugen and his crew. Initially resistant, Tom's resolve weakens when Elman reveals that Lucy has been captured and threatens to harm her unless Tom complies. Reluctantly, Tom begins hacking into the bank system, funneling money into Elman's account. However, the transfer takes time, so Elman asks them to drive into the warehouse. Tom also hacks into Eugen's phone, where he is in charge of watching over Lucy. While the transfer of money is happening, Tom uses that time to call the police without anyone's knowledge. As the police arrive at the warehouse to conduct a search, Eugen and his men manage to evade capture. Lucy, seizing an opportunity, grabs a gun from the floor and turns the tables on Eugen and his crew, successfully escaping with Eugen's firearm. Her triumph is short-lived as she encounters Elman, who has Tom in tow. Despite her initial escape, Lucy is once again held hostage by Elman. Forced by Elman's command, Tom continues transferring money into Elman's bank account, trying to think of a way to save himself and Lucy. In a desperate move, Tom attempts to sabotage their situation by hacking into their cell phones until they explode, and this creates chaos, allowing Tom to break free. However, Elman runs and Tom follows him outside, but Elman retaliates by striking Tom from behind with an iron pipe, intending to end Tom's life in a fit of rage. In the nick of time, Lucy intervenes, shooting Elman in the hand. Despite his injury, Elman attacks Lucy. Enraged by the sight, Tom unleashes the full extent of his power, gathering shockwaves and hurling them at Elman until he succumbs. Following that fateful night, Tom falls back into a coma, but eventually regains consciousness after a few days, accompanied by his grandmother in the hospital. With Elman out of the picture, the neighborhood experiences newfound peace, devoid of crime. Danny, seeking redemption for his betrayal, offers Tom the money he received from Elman. Still, Tom refuses, emphasizing that not everything can be repaid with cash. It comes to light that Danny was the one who recorded the incriminating video that played a crucial role in the events. Despite Danny's attempt at reconciliation, their friendship remains forever changed. Meanwhile, Tom and Lucy embark on their first date, finding solace and calmness in each other. Lucy now knows that I boy is Tom. Lucy expresses helping Tom to develop his remaining superpower for the greater good, and the movie ends here.